Good evening. We, uh, <laughs> if this is your first time here, uh, or you've been here before, but your memory is shot, um, we're not starting late. We, we build in these first few minutes just to give you a chance to meet with some folks, talk to some folks, get to know some folks, welcome our cruisers back, and that kind of stuff. So, um, anyways, but... Uh, <laughs> talk to people, get to know them a little bit more, and I know this is our Sunday night crowd mostly, so you know everybody, but uh, you still can have a few minutes to invest and talk and those types of things, so, but we're glad you're here tonight, and let's have prayer, and then we will, uh, we'll jump right and get rolling, okay? All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for your love and goodness. We thank you for the time we had to be back in your house tonight, Lord, and just open your word and uh, discuss some important principles that will help us in our lives. We just pray that you'll bless our time, uh, bless what we say and what we do. Lord, may it please you, and uh, Lord, may we learn and grow uh, from our meeting tonight. We pray we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. All right. Um, we have started a series in here and we have been talking about kissing the frogs. And uh, if this is your first time here or you don't remember because your memory's failing, um, <laughs> we talk about the uh, fairy tales. You know, they kiss the frog and it turns into the, the prince, that kind of thing. And so uh, our focus has been through this series on... Hey, Larry, can you give me my clicker? Thank you, sir. I do have it on this time, so... Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so that focus we've been talking about is turning our negatives into positives. And we started with uh, fear. We talked about turning that into faith. We've talked about uh, uh, depression and turning it into hope. And uh, last week we talked about um, something else, uh, whatever it was, but I don't remember. Just, uh, what was it? Who remembers? Oh, let me think. I forgot. Anybody, rem anybody remember what last week was? Anybody? Miss Jean? Loneliness, very good. Loneliness to hope, very good. I, we had one smart student. She gets a sticker on her chart. All right, good. Um, <laughs> so tonight we're gonna we're gonna look at another one, and then um, probably in the next two weeks, with John and Charity getting here and getting settled, uh, in some uh, teaching that Don has been doing with our teenagers and trying to get everything kind of lined up here, how this works and waiting for the stars to align, and, you know, I'm just kidding, but uh, um, we're going to make some changes to some groups here coming up, so uh, we're, we're going to try to offer uh, with our teen group and our kids already, we'll have a couple adult classes, and we're looking at maybe gearing towards a young adult class as well, so if, you're, if your memory is not failing, you're in the young adult group. <laughs> just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I struggle, so I, I shouldn't make fun of that, but uh, our young adults know who they are, let's put it that way, but uh, we're going to try to get a gear, uh, group geared towards them, and then, like I said, down the road, we may even look at doing some specialized, you know, a four-week session on such and such a topic, uh, and just give people an opportunity to uh, try out different classes, try out different things, and then get to know the people in those classes as well a little bit more, and we, we just continue to build into our times with our teachers the, you know, first 10 minutes or so just to kind of get to know each other, talk a little bit, and uh, fellowship with one another, especially if there's a guest maybe or their first time here, you get to get to talk with them a little bit as well. So um, so that's kind of what's going to happen in the next couple weeks. We'll try to keep you posted just as soon as we have details as, as far as what classes and what's going to be taught and that kind of thing. We'll let you know, uh, but we'll be there here just, just shortly. All right. Amen. 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 All right. Good. Uh, tonight, we're going to look at uh, this topic uh, from failure to purpose. Uh, we need to understand, first of all, before we even get started, um, God has a purpose for our life. Okay, We don't always know exactly what it is, and we're searching to find it many times, but we do need to know this. No matter what happens in our life, God has a plan and a purpose. Uh, and sometimes we mess up Often we mess up, and, and sometimes we fail uh, and don't meet what you know what God wants for us, and, and we have issues and things like all those lines. Uh, we need to understand that failure is not permanent. First of all, okay, we all do it. How do we rebound from it? How do we learn from it? How do we grow from it? And then how do we realize that God has a purpose still, and to keep moving towards the purpose that He has for our lives even after failure? A lot of times we never fulfill the purpose God has for us because we're so stuck in the in the, the stigma of our failure and, and our past. And well, I did this, and oh, you, you know, it's time we live learned that failure is part of life, all right? No matter what arena you want to look at it in, failure is part of life. How do we learn from it? How do we rebound? How do we find purpose that God has for us? Uh, let me ask you a quick question. Now, tonight as we ask questions, this is a little different if you, this is your first time here. Uh, we, we give you a, a thought, we read some scripture, and then we ask some questions. Uh, and what we'd like for you to do is this. If, you, if you're going to answer a question, if it's a yes or no, that's fine. But if it's going to have any type of sentence structure, 
<laughs> even if it's poor like mine. Um, uh, we, we do have microphones. We just passed around. That does two things. First of all, let's everybody hear you. Second of all, we do record these in case somebody was here and, uh, wasn't here and said, man, I really like to hear that lesson. They can hear the responses that are given. Um, so it's not, to, it's not to make you uncomfortable or embarrassed. It's just to help for both of those causes. So, uh, so if you kind of stick your hand if you want to answer, we'll get your microphone and let you answer. Uh, if it's a yes or no question, I can usually repeat those one word answers, that kind of thing, so it gets heard that way. Uh, but you can help with that if you would. That'd be great. So first question I want to ask you, it's not on your paper or anything, but just kind of as we get started into the lesson. Um, think about something in your life and share it quickly, okay? <laughs> quickly is the key word for this one, okay? Something that you failed at the first time you tried it, but later on you were successful and accomplished it. Go ahead. Carla. Uh, my oh, hey, he's coming with a microphone. Yeah, because you'll probably at least have a sentence, I imagine, so... When I went to get my driver's license and oh. I did the road test, I failed because um, I was just chill and I felt real good that day. So I just kept one hand on the wheel and I thought that was okay. And as soon as we pulled back up to the DMV, she said, you failed before you started. Oh, You're boy. supposed to have both hands on the wheel. I said, oh, shoot. So then the next time I knew what to do and I passed. Good. So you have passed, though. Yes. Okay, then, good. All right, good, good. What else? What else? Quickly, who else got something? Come on, you, come on, you all got something. Good grief. Wait a minute, let me just ask you. Terry, how about the first time you made popcorn? Was this successful in your machine? No. So, yeah, there you go. It is now. It's good stuff, I'm going to tell you. All right, good. All right, good. Go ahead. I studied martial arts, and the first time I was to do a roundhouse kick, I ended up on the floor by myself, nobody else. It was very complicated to learn to do. <laughs> <laughs> Did you learn? Okay, can you do it now? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Who else? Something just, just quickly, just something, just something fast. Go ahead. I um, recently went um, horseback riding with my granddaughter. The first time I tried it, I was six years old, and the horse saw a snake on the ground and decided to fuck me right off oh, the back no. of it. And I, I thought I was never going to get on another horse. I was done with horses. But recently I went out to a ranch here in Benson, and... And the horse's name was Cloud, and I'm in love with horses now. So. Good, good, good. I, this is just, I know this is not like a life or death question here. I'm just trying to kind of break the ice. <laughs> Get you used to talking here, all right? The first time I shot a gun and had to, well, I didn't have to, but I was trying to participate in killing a quail. Uh-huh. That was successful. But then it took me 12 hours to get the feathers off, and I called, <laughs> and they threw it away, and so I killed it in vain. There you go. <laughs> Bob, go ahead. The first time I soloed a plane, I took it straight up because I wanted to just see what would happen. Oh, yeah. And all of a sudden, it started straight down. <laughs> <laughs> and so I began to pull. I, you know, I thought, well, I decided, well, I guess I'm going to meet the Lord. Because uh, you were closer, and, at least. Yeah, but I let go of the controls, and it leveled right off. So I went up and tried it again, and learned that's how you're supposed to do it. Ah, oh, gotcha. All right, good, good. <laughs> what Nancy said reminded me of back when I was living off the land. I uh, decided, well, if I'm going to, you know, do this, I'm going to raise some chickens. I'm going to learn to kill them and eat them. Well, the first time I, I killed the chicken, I chopped its head off, and then it took me two hours to get, and I had the boiling water. I did it all right, you know, according to the Fox, Fox Fire Manual, all that. But darn it, I ended up skint. never mind. Back to the lander's note. But, um... I ended up skinning the darn thing because I couldn't get all the pin feathers <laughs> out. <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, Donna, how about the first time you made an ice cream cone? <laughs> Was it pretty? It, it wasn't bad? Oh, oh never mind. Oh. Uh, this, uh, strike that from the... <laughs> I was just thinking, I know, that's, As that's hard. As kid, we went to a lot of buffets with ice cream machines. <laughs> that is true. Never mind. It's Never mind. before I bought the place. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Anybody else have one just real fast? We don't want to overlook you. I know. How many of you have never failed? Let me ask you that. Let me see your hands. 
<laughs> and here we go. Here we go. Your last one. Y'all remember those little uh, deep fryer cookers, fry, fry daddy oh, yeah. or fry babies? Yeah. But one time I was, uh, I, I, no, I was going to fry fish. And I made a mistake of putting a plastic lid back on it oh. after I got there. <laughs> and everything was black inside. I said, I don't think I'm going to eat this fish. <laughs> you learned from that mistake, didn't you? Yes. I didn't buy another Friday. Amen. Amen. I, in college, I tried to, uh, after work one morning, I tried to change. My fan belt broke on the way home from work. And I had to get to class, and I tried to change it on myself. and couldn't do it, couldn't do it, couldn't do it. I finally had a mechanic friend. He came and did it for me. And then several years later, I did it the same car on my, by myself. So I learned from my, my failure. I wouldn't do it today. I wouldn't even try. But um, too, too, too complicated today. But uh, that's right. You got to call somebody today. But uh, we all failed. Okay. And those are just some simple, silly illustrations from our lives that are personal. Uh, but the key is learning from the failure and, and then realizing I can do this with the right learning in the right direction, the right coaching. Or I learn... I don't want to do this ever again. You know, whatever the case may be. Uh, <laughs> right? So from failure to purpose. So I want to take you to the Gospel of John's where we're going to start. And we're going to go to John 13. And then we're going to go to John 18. And we're just going to read a, a handful of verses from each real quick. And then we'll get into our thoughts tonight. Just two, two thoughts I want to give you this evening. So not, uh, not extremely lengthy or, or uh, uh, you know, outline-wise. Uh, but just a couple thoughts and some, some questions about a very familiar... Uh, character in scripture all right so john 13 and look at verse uh, 36 simon peter said unto him lord whither goest thou jesus answered him whither i go thou canst not follow me now but thou shalt follow me afterwards peter said unto him lord why can i not follow thee now i will lay down my life for thy sake jesus answered him wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake Verily, verily, I say unto thee, the cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. Familiar passage? We, we know what's going on, okay, so we don't need to expound upon it. Turn over to chapter 18 real quick. John chapter 18. And here in a minute, next point, we'll go to John 21, so you can kind of just stay right there. John 18, and look at verse uh, 15. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without, then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then saith the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art not thou also one of this man's disciples? He saith, I am not. And the servants and officers stood there who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves. And Peter stood with them and warmed himself. Skip down to the same chapter. Go down to verse 25. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said, therefore, unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, saith, did not I see thee in the garden with him? <laughs> Hello, you're the knucklehead that swung the sword, remember? No, not me. Verse 27, Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crew. Uh, Peter's reaction to Jesus saying he was going to depart was, where are you going? I'm going with you. I'm sticking with you to the death, man. We're in this thick and thin. And, of course, Jesus knew, and Jesus' response was, Peter, it's not true. You say that, you say that, but you're going to fail. Jesus knew Peter was going to be a failure, right? But Jesus also had a purpose for Peter's life. And if you remember, after Jesus died and rose again, the first person he called to, to, to make sure you sell him I'm alive was, was Peter. The first person he asked after he was alive, do you love me, was Peter. Uh, the first pe person he really had that, inner rela that, that intimate relationship with in the area of love was Peter. Uh, so, so God knew he was going to fail. Jesus knew he was going to fail. But Jesus also knew after the failure there was a purpose for his life. And that's what I want to look at tonight. So number one, realize, and we know this. I know this is, you know, kindergartners get this, all right? Everyone fails sometimes. 
Everyone does. There's no perfection. There's no, man, I, I did this one time and I was just a pro at it. Uh, even the professionals that are out there in their athletic fields or their uh, arenas of work and the, the, the concert cellist, you know, all these people, it's required years and years and years of failure to get where they are. Uh, who, who created the light bulb? <laughs> I thought somebody said Thomas Jefferson. I was like, no, wrong dude. <laughs> but, uh, okay, how many times did he fail before he got it right? <laughs> What was it, like 892 or something like that? Uh, he said, I didn't find 809, I didn't fail 892 times. I, I found, uh, what did he say? So, I, I don't, anyway, look it up. Uh, Google it. But uh, <laughs> he found how to succeed in all the failure, right? Everyone fails sometimes. Here's how I want to ask you this question, okay? Back in um, John 18 and verse number 10, we didn't read this, but it's referred to in, in uh, the end of the chapter, in verse 25 to 27. Uh, remember what he did in the garden when they came to arrest Jesus? Remember, he got the, the sword out, and he cut the servant's ear off, right? So look at that Peter in verse number 10 of chapter 18, and compare him to what we see in chapter uh, 18, verse 25 to 27, having denied him three times, okay? Co contrast the two, and let me ask you a question. How do you describe Peter? <laughs> how, how, who, who is Peter? Who is he? Conflicted. Good word. Wishy-washy. Good. Is there just one word? Just shout them out because I can repeat those. Human. Human. Oh, you know what? Before we throw Peter under the bus, human nature took over, did it not? Good. Anybody else have a word? Reactionary. Reactionary. Impulsive. Who said impulsive? impulsive? Impulsive. Very good. Very good. So you, you, you look at a guy named Peter. Of course, we know Peter was impulsive many times in his life, right? He was always opening his mouth, sticking his foot in it, right? This was another one of those accounts. So in verse number 10, it's like he would already told, told Jesus in chapter 13, I'll die with you. No, you won't. Now he's cutting off a servant's sword, and then you find him. What's he doing? Denying Christ three times. Denying Christ three times. So you see Peter's very conflicted. Uh, he, he's, he's reactionary. He's, eh, I should do this, but man, if I do, I might get myself in more trouble, right? And he responds accordingly. He's human. And, and we see his failure. And of course, we pin it on him very proudly. But many times, that, that, that same Peter, that represents us many times in our walk with Christ. In our relationship with people in the world. And we struggle with this sometimes. You know, I'll do this. And then it comes and we're like, mm -hmm, you know. Uh, that, that's Peter. Okay, so we see what he looks like. Number two, let me ask you this. Why do you think Peter denied Jesus? He was scared. scared. He was scared. What was he scared of? Dying. Dying. If they associate me with him, <laughs> I'm next. Okay. What, is, there, is there any other reason Peter may have denied Christ other than fear? Shame? Go ahead, Margie. I think he may have been unsure of all of his, he had been so loyal to Jesus up till this point, but now he didn't know if, if he had gone the right way. Okay, yeah. okay, was, good. Well, because you, again, that's a great answer because he spent three years at the feet of Jesus, yeah. learning, training, seeing ministry, and Jesus was the, Jesus was the Messiah, right? He'd come, to, he'd come to save the world, and now he's, He's leaving us? What did I get myself into? Very good. That's a good answer. Very good answer. What do you think? Anybody else? Why did Peter deny Jesus? Doubt. He may have also been thinking about the fact that he'd cut some guy's ear off and that guy might be seeking revenge. There you go. <laughs> I gotta get, out, get out of that situation, right? <laughs> so, so let me ask you a question. Now, again... I don't know that we have to answer. This might be a rhetorical question, okay? Because I don't know that we can honestly give an exact answer because we don't know because we've never been in this position. But had you been there, what would you have done on Jesus' behalf? It's easy for us to say, oh, man, I would have I laid down my life for him. But would we? <laughs> would we? I mean, yeah. faced with death? Is it, now, we, we see this in third world countries. We see them faced with you deny or you die, right? And, and some go different directions, what would we do? I mean, our love for Christ ought to compel us to say, I will die for him. Yeah. I will stand for him, and, and no matter what, and if that cost me my life, so be it. But the reality is, as some of the answers have been given, doubt, we're human, we're scared, yeah. we have fear, right? What would we do? What would we do? No, you had an answer. You got to remember, Peter did not have the Holy Spirit then. Right, right. He was working on human 
frailties. Absolutely. So, yeah. So yeah. We'd probably be in the same boat because we would have not have the Holy Spirit either. During that time, yeah. And now we do have, and we still probably are in the same boat if we're honest with ourselves. You know? I mean, if somebody walked in tonight, what would we do? You know? It, it, it's, it's, you know, it, great. It, yeah, sh yeah, they probably wouldn't make it very far. But uh, uh, it's, it's uh, you know, you don't like to think about it. But in all honesty, we're human too. And we fail and we struggle. Uh, we want to we wanna stand for Christ. We want to live for Christ. But in reality, there are times where we might, we might cave under the pressure. It could happen just like you did with Peter. And Peter, by the way, probably much better Christian than I'll ever be. Just, yeah. just going to throw that out there and be honest, okay? So uh, he had his faults, but still better, better walk with Christ than I had. So, Bob, go ahead, and then, then we got Heidi up here. I think we need to start praying now because the time is coming yeah. yep. when, that, when that may be the case for us. Yes, sir. In this country. Yes, sir. Yeah. Things have changed. I'm, I'm an old man, okay? Things have drastically changed yes. in my lifetime. Yep. Yep. And today when you say I'm a Christian... There are more people that are vocal against you. Sure. I mean, it's just not that they turn away. Right. They're vocal and physically yep. against you. Yep. Yep. Even if they have no reason for it. I think we better start praying now that God gives us the power yeah. of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Because yes. it is going to happen to somebody in this room Absolutely. before they die. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we, we have freedoms now, but they're not guaranteed. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. This is kind of a weird angle. But because of Peter's flesh, he wanted to go get warm, and he went in with a group of people that questioned who he was had allegiance with. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, so I don't know. I would think if I was Peter, I wouldn't go hang out with those guys to begin with, and then they wouldn't have asked me. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? This isn't part of the lesson or even a, a necessarily a thought or a question, but... Uh, you be careful who you hang around with, right? I mean, don't, don't put yourself in the devil's fire, right? Good, good, all right. Uh, let me ask you another question here, number three. Um, now, think about this one, okay? What, and again, we weren't there, and men, men are different than ladies, okay? What feelings do you think Peter had after he heard that rooster crow? Yeah, shame. Yeah, I think that's the overwhelming response, shame. I think he realized very quickly, man, I said I was going to, and I did not. I failed. And by the way, I didn't just fail once. I failed three times. And, and now, now think about this. When Christ was then crucified, right, he'd gone, dead, in the grave, what did Peter do? I'm, I'm going back to my old ways. Why? Because I'm a failure. I'm a failure. What, again, we kind of know what Peter did at that point. The Bible tells us he wept. You know, he wept when, when he realized what had happened, what he had done. Uh, and then he went back to his old lifestyle. Think, think about it. You ever, you ever looked at your Christian life and realized, oh, yeah. I failed again. How, how, you ever feel like Peter? We all have. We all have. It's miserable. <laughs> it's a terrible feeling to realize I failed. I didn't fail my spouse. I didn't fail my pastor. I didn't fail my kids. I didn't fail. Sister. I failed God. <laughs> and then you feel guilty. And you feel full of shame. And then you doubt. Man, did I, did I really even love him? You know, and it's overwhelming. But it's reality. It's reality. Failure is part of life. Again, learning from it and growing from it is the really and the important thing, and we'll talk about that here in just a minute. Number four, think about the fear of failing, because sometimes it's not just, I'm going to fail, and that's going to make me feel bad. Sometimes you dread doing something because you think you might not accomplish it. I don't want to do this because I might fail, okay? How does that affect your everyday life? The fear of, if I do this, I might not make... Again, there's a secondary question to it. It kind of goes with it. The ups and downs in your spiritual life, you know. How, how do you... Somebody you say, I don't want to step out in faith because I might fail. How do you deal with that? It makes you question a whole lot of stuff, doesn't it? Yeah. I used to have a fear of failure and had a wise elder uh, leader in the company I worked for. He said, there are no bad failures. There are just good ideas that didn't work out. Sure. And when I started taking in that context, 
you try things, if it doesn't work, it may have not have been the whole situation. It may have been on that day at that moment that wasn't going to work. So sure. Yeah. Very good. Outlook. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. One thing it does is it, it keeps you from having a lot of successes that you would have had if you had tried it. Yeah. 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 Um, because of previous failures throughout my Christian life, every time I speak to the Lord now, I, I almost have a fear of failing, and I, I ask him, make it very clear what your plan is for me today. Yeah. Uh, because I don't want to blow it. Yep. 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 Yes, go ahead. In the back. So something I grew up hearing from my mom was always just do it afraid. And the fear of failing, because I think we all have that fear, you just, what I do is I just always tell myself, just do it afraid. And that works on repeat, mm -hmm. you know, so. Yeah. Do it afraid. Do it afraid, yeah, do it anyways, yeah, do it anyways. Oh, yeah. Step out in fear. The fear ain't going nowhere, so you, you conquer it. Yeah, very good, very good. Here, and here's the other thing. Here's a way to do that is realizing this, when we're talking about spiritual life especially, God doesn't ask you to do anything. He doesn't give you the ability to do. You need, we need to understand that. We need to really grasp that truth. He's not going to tell you to step out in faith and do something if he's not going to enable you to do that. So that helps me to step out in the fear of failure and say, well, I'll just step out anyways. You know, and if I fail, I fail, but God's got me. Okay. So spiritually speaking, that's a wonderful help, knowing. You know, he's not going to tell you to do something you can't do, all right? So, yeah, yeah, so he, he's got us. So uh, let me ask you one more question here about uh, that particular thought. Um, we all fail sometimes, and Peter, of course, is our, our main uh, focus here. The story of Peter, how does that humble or encourage you? What does it do for you? It encourages you. Why is it? Bring him the microphone, uh, Roger, because I want to hear his answer. Since you brought it up. <laughs> why, why does it encourage you, Bob? Because when I have failed, I know God can forgive me and empower me and go forward. Yep. And if I am not doing something that God has directed me to do, I'll never be afraid. Yep. Right. But if I'm doing something I'm supposed to do, I'm always going to be afraid. <laughs> and if we're not afraid doing something for God then we're just going to stand still and be alone. There you go. And Peter, if he would have just said fooey with this, would have just been a lump of clay. Yep. yep. But because he was willing to say, I was wrong. Yep. God was right. I'm going to serve him to death, and he yep. did. Yep. yep. Amen. Amen. Good. Right behind you. <clears throat> For me, it causes me to examine myself. Is it my fear... Or is it, when I have to examine myself, I have to look at, do I need to be doing this because it was God's will yes. for me? Or sometimes you know God's called you to do things, but you Second. don't, you, you, you do it kicking and screaming sure. until you don't. Yeah. And so yeah. it, it causes me to examine what were my intentions or do I just take the leap of blind faith and yeah. trust yeah. God called me to it. Yeah, yeah, good. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. So for me personally, it encourages me. Um, so I grew up in church, okay, and I left for a while. Um, and while I was gone... I would tell anybody and everybody who would listen that God hated them <laughs> and that, um, you know, just not some great things. Yeah. I made some very poor choices. But um, when I started coming back to church, to here, this church, um, I kept thinking about Peter. So I'm really glad that you taught on Peter today, actually, <laughs> because back when I went and got saved a few months back, this story just kept going through my head over and over and over again. Yeah. And I was like, well, if Peter denied Christ and he was one of his disciples, yeah. then he'll take me. Yeah. Amen. Know, like, Amen. So, yeah. That's good. 
good. Very good. It is encouraging because, again, you know, Peter, one of the disciples, did made these mistakes. Yeah. And yet God forgave him. And, of course, we know the end of the story as well. And then God used him in a huge way. Huge way. I think we need to get into the Bible when we have a desire to do something that God's, we think God is telling us. Yeah. And make sure it matches up to sure. what the Word of God is. Because sometimes... Satan will direct us in the wrong direction if he's, yeah. but if we take it to the word of God yeah. and it matches up with the word of God and we feel in, encouraged to do that from something deep inside of us, we need to step out on faith and say, Satan, get behind me. I'm going yeah. forward. There you go. Amen. And that's what Peter did. Yep. Amen. Amen. Good. Good, good, good. Yeah. Good, good. I love it. All right. Good. So everyone fails, end of discussion, all right? What do we do with failure, okay? And this, of course, is the end of the story here, but we'll see. So go to John 21, and I want to look at a couple of verses there. And then I'm actually going to turn to um, Acts chapter 2 right after that. So if you want to be ready to do that, it's just a couple pages over from John 21, obviously. Uh, look at uh, life can become lonely, yeah. That was last week. There we go. Uh, the second thing, okay, and, and this is this is how I'm now learning from going from from the from the failure part to realizing that God has a purpose. Okay, failures open new opportunities. Yeah. How many times have you heard somebody say something? like this? when God shuts a door, He opens a window. Yeah. That is so cliche. First of all, but second of all, I don't think it's true either. No. I think if God shuts a door, He opens another door larger than the one He yeah. had in the first place. Yeah. It says, step through it, fool, <laughs> right? <laughs> Come on, knucklehead, I'm opening another one, right? Uh, but failures create new opportunities, new opportunities for me to learn, new opportunities for me to grow, new opportunities for me to get closer to Christ, new opportunities for me to do things I didn't think I could do before because I learned from my failures, all right? So let's look at John 21 and look at verse uh, 14. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples, and after that he was risen from dead. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? I wonder why he asked him three times. Ah, because he denied him three times. I think Jesus is getting real with Peter. I really do. I think Jesus is saying, Peter, look, dude, I have done forgave you a long time ago, but, but I want you to learn to forgive yourself, and I want us to move forward with this. Uh, and he says this third time, uh, do you love, love us thou me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, lovest thou me? That's how grieved Jesus was when he said for the third time, I know him not. But anyways, and he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, feed my sheep. So again, you see Jesus reacting with Peter, responding with Peter, giving Peter the knowledge. Listen, I've, I've forgiven you. And by the way, I have a plan for you. Feed my sheep. And he's not talking about going out in the field and gathering the sheep together. We know that. Uh, take care of the flock. You know, I got, I got a mission for you. I got a job for you. I have a, a purpose for your life. Go to Acts chapter 2 real quick and look at uh, uh, verse 14. And then we're going to skip down later into that chapter in verse 37. Look at verse 14 of Acts chapter 2. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. And then you skip down to verse number 37. And it says, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. Ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to you, that, those that are far off, even as many as the Lord God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. The same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Now, again, I want us just to realize Peter failed. Jesus said, I've forgiven you. I still have a purpose. And now you see Peter fulfilling part of that purpose. Can you imagine being a part of a day 
where 3,000 people came to know Christ, got baptized, and became part of the church. Wow! That's impressive. That's amazing. Uh, what, a, what, a, what, what a God, first of all, okay? So when you think about that, that's a new opportunity for Peter, okay? Peter had never done that before. Before he denied Christ, he's not standing up preaching to the crowds. You notice that? He is now. He's not telling the people, thus saith the Lord. He is now. Uh, <laughs> he ran ahead. He ran and denied. Now he's saying, hey, let me tell you about this God. Or let me tell you about this Jesus who died and rose again. Trust him, all right? So new opportunities now have been created in his life because of the failure. So, so here's our questions, and we'll run through these real quick, and then we'll, uh, we'll get finished up with these. We've got to hurry. First of all, we, we know the answer to this question. So I'm not, I didn't phrase it as a question. I phrased it as a statement. It's a very serious sin to disown Christ. Okay, and by the way, when we think of, think of our failures, probably none of us has failed in that capacity like, like Peter. Probably none of us have stood before people and said, I denounce Christ. Okay, so you got to think about the severity of that. It's a pretty big deal, okay? How do you explain what Jesus then does for him in John 21? I mean, Jesus should have been furious with Peter. But what does Jesus do? He forgets. Why? How does he, how does he do this? God is love. 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 That's a, good, that's a good summation of it all, isn't it? A good summary. Because he loves. How about, how about compassion? You know, he, he's showing compassion to Peter. Who Peter, after this denial, probably, you know, he went out and wept. Then he went out and went back to his old life. He doesn't expect to be used of God ever again in his life. And then Jesus comes along and says, hey, wait a minute, buddy. <laughs> Let's rethink this. Right? Uh, how, about, how about this? How about this? Do you ever just think about this? Jesus is reinvesting in the life of Peter. Sure. Sure. If anybody had a right to say, Peter, I don't want you on my team anymore. <laughs> right? It was Jesus. Think, think, about, think about athletic programs today and how often people get cut, get transferred, get traded. We just don't want you anymore. We don't like your attitude. You're sitting on the bench. You're, you know. If anybody could say, I want you on my team, it was Jesus. And Jesus says, welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. Oh, boy, yeah. The strength and the courage it took. Meekness. Let's, let's throw that word out there. The meekness of Christ. Gentleness. Uh, 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 strength under control. <laughs> you know? Uh, wow. And that's what, that's what Jesus did for Peter. Now, let me just say this, okay? In, in comparison, I know sin is, you know, sin is sin. I get that. But in comparison, denying Christ and me doing something else, some other type of sin in my life, okay, the severity we would look at and say, wow, that's pretty, that's pretty horrific to deny Christ. Mine's not that bad. If Jesus could say to Peter, I forgive you of that, and I still have a plan for you, do you think he can do that with our sin? Absolutely. A hundred percent. So that's why we have to realize, don't get stuck and get, get bogged down in the sin of the past or the failures because he forgives those things. And he can forgive my failure just like he did the huge failure that we would say Peter, Peter had. He does that, okay? Uh, so next question, let me ask you this. And, and, and think about this before you answer, okay? <laughs> okay? And, and this might be a microphone thing. It might just be a word thing. However you want to do it, it's fine. But how should we as Christians who aren't Jesus, but we're made in his image and we're supposed to be like him, Amen. How should we respond to other Christians who make mistakes, who fail? How should we respond? Forgiveness. Forgiveness. There you go. Look, look at the log in your own eyes. First. There you go. Check, check yourself first, right? Check yourself. Okay. Understanding. That's what I have written. Good. How else? Come on. Somebody else. With love. How about this? Let, 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 so why don't you answer, okay? Somebody answer that's failed and a Christian treated them improperly. And you tell me how a Christian should treat you. Come on, somebody. Somebody's got this answer. Come on. <laughs> Anybody? Nobody? Move on to the next question. <laughs> well, it's easy to say love and forgiveness. That's easy. That's easy. Maybe that hits too close. Lift them up. Pick them up, brush them off. Encourage them to keep going. Good. 
Good, Terry, it looks like you got a microphone. Yeah. Uh, I know of an instance where um, a Christian was going through some really rough times, wasn't necessarily reading, leading a great life, but um, another Christian kind of pounced on him and said, oh. it's because of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And that's true, but that's probably not the best way to go about sure, it. Sure, sure. Yeah. The, the, the problem we have in our churches and our Christianity today is very simple. We see the problems, the mistakes, the failures, and by nature we are very judgmental. And so our desire is not necessarily to help them, but to say, well, here's why. Or here's how you should fix this. Or well, I'm glad I'm not in his shoes. Or I'm better than him because I'm not. And so it's real easy to look at those failures and say, mm -hmm, at, least, at least I didn't do that, right? And so we tend to justify our own lives sometimes. Man, listen, we, we see it in Scripture, okay? We're supposed to extend love and grace and forgiveness to people just like Jesus did to us. I mean, we're, we're scum of the earth, and Jesus said, I love you. And I forgive you. And you get my grace. He gives us grace. And I think there's a scripture. I don't remember the exact number off the top of my head. But it talks about how he gives us grace to help in time of need. Yeah. I think we look at that with a selfish perspective. That verse sometimes. And we think, oh, whenever I need help, he gives me grace. I think he said, that verse teaches he gives us grace to help in time of need. And if I would realize the amount of grace that God extends to me and other people extend to me, it makes me extending it to others a little bit more um, easy, to, easy to do and to accomplish. We need to show grace. Here, here's the one thing we need to understand. We do not know what that person that is struggling yes. has gone through or is going through. So we show grace to try to get them to where God wants them and we know God can do with their lives. But we got to show grace. We have to. We have to. It's not my job. Push him, push him away. Yeah, turn him away even farther. Very good. You're right. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. So, yes. Uh, oh, yeah, we have two more. Go ahead, Bob. I like the scripture where Jesus was saying to a crowd that was persecuting a lady, you without sin, mm -hmm. you go ahead and throw the first. Yeah, stone. yeah. And if we would really take that to heart, I doubt if any of us in here could throw a stone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yep, you're exactly right. My place is not to judge. My place is to forgive and show grace. I yep. need eyes in the back of my head. <laughs> I, it's just a silly thing, but I know you all have heard that, but it reminded me that Christians are the ones who shoot their own wounded. Yep. Yep, we're, we're quick to sometimes to kick them when they're down instead of giving them a hand to help them up. So. By, the way, by the way, the goal of any relationship when there's mistakes and failures and all that kind of thing, the goal should always be restoration. Yeah, healing. Um, if you've ever been on a ch in a church where church discipline, if you read the constitution of the church and you read the Bible uh, and, and they have to put a member on church discipline due to some sin and some failures and things like that in their life, the goal is never to say, we don't want you around. We don't love The goal is always restoration. And if that's not our goal, we're, we're, we're in it for the wrong reason. Yeah. And we're not looking at it properly. So, Larry, go ahead. At the risk of Althea walking back into the room, <laughs> a couple of years ago when we did the ladies thing and, you know, we did the tea thing, one of the concepts that that little skit we did was talking about we're going to share somebody else's sin or what they're doing wrong with somebody else under the guise of helping them to pray for them. Sure. So when we are, when we see a fellow Christian who is in a bad situation or going through something, we need to shut our trap and pray for them sure. as opposed to, oh, let me tell you what so-and-so is going through so that you can help me pray with them. Right, right. Which a lot of times is what people end up doing sure. under the guise of trying to help people. Sure, sure. Very good, very good. For uh, many years, Mo and I, you know, were in that cult. And when we left, those people had nothing to do with this because we were a non-Christian people because we left that cult. And, you know, you see them at a store or someplace, you know, and they go the other way. Well, praise the Lord. We survived. We still serve the Lord. <laughs> Amen. And I don't know what happened to some of them, but thank the Lord that we uh, got left that church because yeah. otherwise I don't know what it would be. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Good. All right, I'm going to ask this next question, and this is, this is, uh, 
this is a this is a speed round. Okay, this is a speed question because there's only so many you can give. So we're going to see who gets them first. You can just shout them out, okay? You don't need to wait for a microphone, okay? No duplicate answers. If you duplicate an answer, we'll give you five more seconds on the clock and start over. No, I'm kidding. All right, here we go, all right? Other than Peter, name some other biblical characters that God used greatly even though they failed. Job. Job. Jonah. Jonah. Rahab. Rahab. Moses. Samson. David, David's on the screen. Who said that? Sean, was that you, Sean? The, the one time you opened your mouth. No, I'm just teasing. I'm kidding you. I'm, it's okay. I, now she's never going to come back. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. She's leaving. Look, at she's grabbing her stuff. <laughs> she failed. Yeah, there you go. What, what have you learned from that, Sean? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> David, very good. David, very good. Well, Jonah's been said. Who else? Adam. A <laughs> Adam. Oh, wow. The, the father of all failures. <laughs> well, actually, it was Eve's fault. She did it first. But I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Anybody else have a name? <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, how, about, how, about, how about ten of the disciples that weren't at the foot of the cross? How about them? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, hello. Uh, so, so that's the thing. It, that, it, it, it's easy to name them, but it's encouraging us to know that God still used them after that. Uh, he'll use us. He'll create new opportunities. We've got to allow him to do so, and we've got to follow those new opportunities and realize they're failures, uh, fa or learn from our failures and new opportunities to come. Uh, ne next one, i got to hurry. i got two more, and i got to finish, okay? N next. You've heard this said. You may have thought this in your life. Some failures are too big to overcome. Pastor, you don't know where I've come from. You don't know what I've dealt with. There is no way I can get through this. You just don't get it. Can I ask you this question? It's attached to that phrase, okay? Based on today's lesson, how can we be encouraged to move beyond that failure? Look at Paul. Look at Paul. Hello. <laughs> yeah. 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 The poster, the poster child of Christian killers, if you will. <laughs> and God turned his life around. Again, based on Peter. It's not hard to look at, to say. And the, some of those names that you all just mentioned. Uh, there is no failure too big for God to overcome. Man on the cross. There you go. Know. There's nothing we can do that God could say, I'm sorry, I can't handle that one. That's a new one. Boy, I never heard that one before. I'm struggling how to do it. He knows. In any failure... He can take care of. He, he can help us to rebound from. He can, he, can, he can strengthen us to realize, now I've got something new and I still have a purpose for you. Look to me. Don't focus on the failure. All right? So there's nothing too big. One more question, okay? And, and this might be something you have to think about here a little bit. But uh, that lesson that we just learned and how we all fail, but that creates new opportunities if we'll listen and God still has a purpose. How can that lesson be used in, in sharing the gospel with non-believers? Okay, sharing our life experience. This is what I was, and this is what I am. How about, how about this thought? It, 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 this, I don't have notes on this or anything. I just thought about this. But how about, have you ever witnessed to somebody over and over and over and over? And you feel like, man, I'm failing. I'm not getting through, right? Here's the encouragement. You just keep sharing the gospel because one day it's going to break through. And, and if you don't do it, somebody else can come along and water, and maybe that gospel will break through. So you got to stay encouraged. Keep on, keep on sharing Christ. Yes, sir. Make sure that they know that we're not perfect, we're yeah. forgiven, and they yeah. can be too. Yeah, yeah. Because too many of them think that we think we're perfect yep. and better than they are. Yep. No, yep. not perfect, just forgiven. Yep, absolutely, yeah. I, I am very cautious and careful whenever I share the gospel with anybody that when we get to the point of, you know, you got to admit that you're a sinner, I am very, very vocal in saying I'm one of the biggest but you're the preacher. Yeah, and I struggle, and I, and I sin, and God forgives. And I'm very quick and careful to make sure I point out that I'm one of them. Um, it's not, I'm not coming at I'm better than you perspective. I have failed, and this is what God has done for me. He can do the same for you. It's a great, it's a great lesson to apply to sharing the gospel and witnessing because, because they're coming from a place of failure, but so have you. And, and you're going to fail at getting them to respond sometimes, but you still keep pressing on because God's purpose is for them to get saved eventually. So we keep sharing the gospel no matter what. Um, last thought, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm done, okay? Um, I already said that. That's just the end there. There we go. Next week, what's up there? 
Oh, I didn't change it because you don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so, so this week, here's what I want you to think about, okay? Is there a friend, a person you know, maybe an acquaintance, maybe not necessarily a friend, coworker, acquaintance, that you know that has failed recently and needs to be encouraged? Because your homework is this. Go encourage them. You don't have to say, I told you so. That's not encouraging. Well, I got the answer. And this is what, that's not encouraging. Go and encourage them. Maybe, again, maybe it's somebody who, has, who, who needs to be saved. You need to encourage them again in the gospel. How about this? Maybe there's a Christian you know that maybe used to serve God or maybe used to go to church and they've kind of fallen away. Maybe this week try to go to them and say, look, we all have been there. We've all done it, but God has a purpose. And I'd love to see you come back to Christ and get more involved and get serving, get in church, whatever the case may be. Look for somebody this week. We all have somebody. I guarantee it. If we were to stop and think and pray, God will reveal somebody to you that you could encourage this week in some area of failure and try to get them to see the new opportunity and the blessing of learning from that failure. All right? That's your homework. All right? Now, I'm not going to check up on you make you fill out a paper next week, but... That's something you need to work on this week, all right? Give you, give you some encouragement in that, all right? So uh, uh, failure is not final, okay? Uh, God still has a purpose and a plan for our life. Let's, let's look for that and learn from the failures, okay? Next week, we will have a lesson, okay? I just didn't put it up there for you. So uh, we will be here next week. And like I say, in the next week or two, we'll be changing gears as well and shifting gears as far as uh, what direction our, our classes will go and offering other, other opportunities as well along those lines. So that's part of the reason that's not up there. I needed to see how many more weeks um, we were going to have together. So, um, but we'll let you know on that. So probably in the next couple of weeks, we'll start getting that, those things shifted and, and geared differently there. So uh, just so you are aware, all right? All right, well, let's have prayer together, and uh, we'll be dismissed this evening, all right? Father, we love you tonight. We thank you so much for your goodness. God, I am so thankful uh, that even though we do fail, and we fail often, and we, if we're honest, we fail more than we, we would like to or that we should, we're so thankful for your grace and your mercy and your forgiveness and your long-suffering, your love, your compassion. Uh, thank you, Lord, for uh, taking our failures and saying, I still forgive you, and, and I still have a purpose and a plan. Thank you for using us in spite of our failures. Uh, thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness and those, uh, those times where you say, hey, uh, if you'll learn from your failure and you'll grow from it, I've got a new opportunity for you. May we claim those new opportunities and walk out and step out in faith and trust you uh, to continue to work and use us, Lord, uh, to uh, fulfill kingdom purposes here on earth and to serve you uh, while we're here, Lord, before we meet you face to face. Uh, Father, we ask you now tonight as we uh, dismiss, we just pray that you'll give us safety as we go to our homes, and uh, we ask you to live, uh, help us to live for you this week, Lord. And as we just mentioned. Help us to encourage somebody this week who maybe has dealt with a time of failure. May we be a, 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 a bright spot in their life and a time of edification and uh, just encourage them in Christ, Lord, we pray. Uh, Father, we ask you to bring us back again on Wednesday as we meet together and uh, just work in our hearts and our lives this week, we pray. We thank you again for all that you have done and for what you'll continue to do. And we ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you again for joining us tonight. God bless you. Shake a hand or two on your way out. Everybody give Sean a hug and uh, let her know that she's loved. All right. <laughs> we'll see you Wednesday. <laughs>